I know a lot of people are not going to want to watch my full review, which was over 30 minutes. So for the ADD people that will not watch that, I'm going to do these shorter ones that go into more detail about each individual part of the controller. So with that, I'm going to start on the pads. Uh, first thing I'll go over is the banks, A, B, C, and D are essentially just storing your pad data that you want to pull up later. It also stores the color settings you have. So banks are just giving you more pads. So you got 16 per bank, so that's 16 times 4 is how many pads you have. So this is my bank A. Then I'll show you some of the other colors. There's some orangish ones with a blue down there. Another bank, multicolor, and that one's just blue with some red and purple. And I'll show you how you change colors. Basically, you hit edit, and then you choose a pad, and move over to page two of that pad's settings, and the colors will be there. And there's an on color and an off color. On just means when it's pressed. So the on color for these is red in this case, and off is orange. So on that pad that I hit, I'll go ahead and show you all the colors so you, just so you know what the controller has as far as color options. There's off, red, orange, amber. Amber looks almost exactly like orange, but it is slightly lighter in person. After amber, there's yellow, whoops, green, green blue, aqua, light blue, blue, purple, pink, hot pink, light purple, light green, light pink, gray, and that's it. So you do have quite a bit of options for your colors and you can set them up however you want. I mean if you want, say I wanted some blue to go down the middle of this, you can just set it, that's actually a green, whoops. So there you go, you just set it how you want, and then you can set the off color, or on rather, so the pressed color, I'll make it amber, so now it'll look the same as those when you hit it. But uh, anyway, that's it's just a basic thing, something cool they threw in so you can change your colors. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you the 16 level and full level, which were the other buttons above the four banks. They're up here. 16 level is basically taking whichever sound you're on, like say it's clap, and it will rise it from low, lowest sound to up to a higher volume. It's basically volume, 16 levels of volume. So you start down low, and you start getting louder. So that's all 16 level really is. Now full level puts all the pads, all the different sounds they're set to, to basically they're all full blast it's going to send the highest MIDI value for each pad so it's the loudest it can be no matter how light you hit it so even if I barely tap it, it's loud so full level is useful if you want to have full blast sound on all your pads but generally that will be off so as far as sensitivity I'll try and show you real quick they're really nice as far as their sensitivity and you can change the velocity curve and I think there's some other curve settings. Well, I'll show you those in the menu at the end of the video. So, barely tapping, starting to get harder, and then that's like fully pounded key or pad. So, they are pretty sensitive, and you can change that sensitivity to what you need it to, to be. In the review, I mentioned that they were pretty much exactly how I wanted them to be. They're hard and solid, but they have that sensitivity that you want. They don't push into the slot very much, which other pads I've used did push down into the square, and I didn't like that. So these are perfect if you like more of a solid pad. I 
seeing as you break them in with use, they'll get better. Like they'll have a little give, but it'll it won't be too much. It'll basically be just right after you break them in. So pretty much perfect when you first get it so I like them. Uh, as far as sounds I've got some in the background you heard. You can link knobs, the knobs and sliders on the controller to any of the sound software you have for the pads. In this case I'm using FPC in Fruity Loops uh, and as far as the MPC Essential software I'll probably do another video on that separate from all this uh, for people that did want to know that and also Ableton Live Lite which I those both came with the controller but I did not do a part of the review on them I left them out because they were too big of a program to sit and go over so I'll probably do individual videos for those in the future but anyways I'm using FPC right now and I'll show you sort of like say you wanna do something with that drum or kick. You can control maybe the tuning or filtering. In this case I'm messing with tuning. But uh, I can link that to a knob on the controller and change it. So see what it does. Oop. There we go. See, it gets nice and low. But that's just tuning. It's basically lowering the pitch of the pad, or sound that's in the pad. But uh, basically you can link your knobs and sound effects to your pads and control it all from the controller. So that's an important thing that you'll want to do once you first get it set up. Uh, I didn't show note repeat just now in the video, so I'll do that. Note repeat, remember, is the Basically, it's controlled by the time division, so it lets you do that. And if you choose the higher time division, which is selected over here, it'll speed that up. These are the lower settings. It starts getting faster. So. And that, now that note repeat applies to all the pads all at once. I don't think you can change them individually. You can just screw around with it. It's fun to mess with. You can almost build patterns or little me uh, rhythms just screwing around with note repeat. But uh, that's basically all there is to that. For the pads, as far as recording, you can record what you've done and then layer back over it, which that's the, the MPC style of workflow is to basically record a rhythm fit by physically hitting the pads and then re-record that same rhythm applying more patterns over it so that over time you're building a whole song or whole rhythm with those parts. Uh, overall the sensitivity like I said is just how I want. As far as changing that, let me zoom into the screen, hopefully you'll be able to see it. Well first I'll show you the edit. When you hit edit and hit a pad there's type which is, lets you choose note or program change or program bank. And the mini channel just lets you choose which channel. In this case the default's USB A10. I don't know why because all the other one, other things like knobs I think are USB A1. I, maybe they have a limit to the amount of data each channel sends or something. I'm not sure. But anyways, note lets you choose the musical note that that pad's applied to. That's pretty useful. And then on the next page was where the color options were underneath that MIDI to DIN option, D-I-N. Uh, so that's really all there is. Page 3, note mode, momentary, or toggle. So that would be like you can toggle the note on or off, or toggle the pad on or off as if it's being held pressed down. That would be useful for certain things, but I don't really mess with it. So uh, other than that, there's global pad settings 
which are basically the, what I was talking about earlier, the velocity curve, it's like the sensitivity. So there's pad threshold, how hard it has to be hit to cross that threshold and actually play a sound, and then the curves and the sense uh, sensitivity. So those are really where your pad, that'll apply to all pads since it's a, it's a global setting. So I haven't changed any of those because they were exactly how I like right out of the box. Those are the, the default settings, at least for this patch, so uh, if you were to need to change them, that's where they're at. And that's really all there is to the pad stuff. So hopefully this gave you some more detail that I didn't mention in the longer review. And I'll see you next time I do one of the other quick reviews. I'll probably do one where I go through the presets and knobs and other stuff, so thanks for watching.